Hello, everybody. I hope you are doing amazingly well. This evening, I wanted to chat for a little while um, about the troubleshooting on a carnivore diet. We start, we get excited, we get super motivated for things, and then sometimes challenges happen, we fall off, we get a little stuck, we hear all of the advice that's on the internet, and we get a little overwhelmed with what exactly we should be doing. And so today I want to answer lots of questions. Um, you can comment down below as well, and any questions that you have, I can review all of them after I'm done and over the next few days and weeks, and then I could turn common questions into future videos, but also uh, answer questions for you right now. Let me get this situated. This is my first time using like a new little fancy uh, streaming platform. So here we go. There's what? There's Chris. I get to pop up and say, yes, yes. So everything's working. He said it's working for you. Um, so I just, um, this is now I feel like an actual real YouTuber, a fancy YouTuber. So I can put stuff on the screen when you guys are asking questions. So I just wanted to make sure everything's working this evening. Um, but I'm super excited. So in my locals community, I have people who have been doing now a uh, carnivore, um, for about 11 days and they are uh, doing so well. We have stories already of people losing weight. People are improving their health. People are getting more active. People who haven't exercised in forever are feeling good. They're sleeping better. So I hope that if you're struggling, if you're having any challenges currently, then feel free to mention those below. And hopefully I can try and help a little bit with that. Um, that's the goal of all of this. It is uh, Amy's in snowy flag staff. It is chilly here in Arizona, but probably not for the rest of the country. Because I think the rest of the country is cold, 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 cold. And here in Phoenix, um, it's chilly for us, but probably not for the rest of you. Um, I will say I have a coworker who is doing carnivore as well. And she's doing awesome. And then I have another one who's like, very nervously thinking about going carnivore and they keep asking like i heard it's going to be so terrible and there's this terrible flu and everything's miserable when you start carnivore it doesn't have to be that way and it also like several people in my groups um my group is saying like it's pretty overwhelming i'm so overwhelmed i don't know where to start it doesn't have to be overwhelming it doesn't have to be confusing um i i think there's a lot of advice all over the internet and that can be a really good thing we have so many different people's perspectives. You can find somebody who's dealing with your health issues, who's going through what you're going through, and you can kind of learn from them and, and find out ideas of what worked for them. So I do think that's a benefit, but it also can make things really confusing because you're going to be hearing lots of different sides of things. Um, you're going to hear people talking about high fat and high protein and fasting and other people saying fasting is terrible and other people saying you need electrolytes and others saying you don't. So I think that's what makes it confusing. And what I hope to do for you this evening is just to let's take off some of the burden of that. And let's hopefully put your mind at ease to realize that carnivore can be very simple, especially in the beginning. And then over time, you might have to make some tweaks or adjustments based on how things are going for you. But let's find a way to like start very simple. And more than anything, you have to find a way to make carnivore work in your life or you're not going to be able to stick to it long term. If you are trying to mirror a diet that worked for somebody else, if you are trying to mirror a lifestyle that is very far removed from your own, you will not be able to stick to this very long and it will not last. And so that is my like initial piece of advice that I can share in the beginning is that this has to you have to be able to adapt this to a way that's going to work for you and your lifestyle. And I think that sometimes we have to just forget what the rules are. You know, there's a lot of Facebook communities where they get very concerned about what is or is not carnivore. The question you have to ask is, is the food that I'm eating, is those spices, are, are these things helping me to be healthier or are they holding me back? That's the only thing that really matters. Not necessarily like, is it carnivore or am I allowed to eat it? Like, is this helping you feel better or is this holding you back from being as healthy as possible? Those are all the things that, that you need to consider. So I hope to answer a lot of that stuff this evening. Um, and you know, I'm a big fan of uh, electrolytes and element, and I want to thank element for sponsoring this video. I put it in the comments uh, as well, but 
I know a lot of you have utilized it and love using Element, and it is an electrolyte drink mix. Um, I have my big giant jug of water here, and in this water is a pack of unflavored Element, which is just um, sodium, potassium, and magnesium. There's no sweeteners and no fillers and nothing else inside of this one, and it's the one that I use. Um, when I water it down like that, then it's not going to be salty. Like it's going to have like a good mineral taste. So unflavored doesn't mean nothing. It is sodium, which is what you need when you're going low carb and carnivore, um, is some kind of salt or sodium to help you hold water. I was explaining to uh, a coworker today that like when you're eating a lot of carbs, your body naturally holds a lot of water weight. And when you cut those carbs, we instantly drop that water weight and so sometimes you can deplete natural electrolytes that your body has and you can end up being dehydrated. And that's where some of those symptoms like the keto flu, the headaches, the non, you know, the fatigue, maybe you're not sleeping quite well. Those can all happen if you're not properly hydrated. And so having just a pack of element in the morning, one of my coworkers was feeling like she's 11 days into carnivore and by like day six, she was still feeling pretty rough. And I was like, girl, I sent you home from our last meeting with some element, pull that out and use it. And within hours, she felt so much better. And so I highly recommend that. There are lots of flavored versions as well. Citrus is a big um, favorite of ours. And then right now we are loving all the hot ones. They have a holiday medley pack that you can put in hot water or coffee and, and just have like a nice warm mug of hot chocolate uh, or chocolate chai is one of the flavors. And then chocolate caramel. Uh, Chris drinks that one every day. And it's just a nice way of like, we're going to take the kids up to see some snow soon, um, which everybody else is looking forward to, but me, <laughs> I've had enough snow in my life. So we're going to take the kids up to see some snow and we're going to take some chocolate element and then sit around and have like some hot chocolate in the evenings. Some, listen, Mr. DK, you either love the unflavored version or you don't love the unflavored version. There's a whole cult cult of us that love the unflavored. I just have to uh, water it down enough for myself, but don't pour a whole packet in a cup of coffee. Like that would be very strong. My mom takes this one packet and she takes it into a restaurant and she just sprinkles a little bit in her water at the restaurant or she like makes one pack um, spread throughout her day. So she can kind of like just add a little bit of flavor, but I wouldn't like start with a whole packet in a small amount of liquid because it would taste really strong, but you can get a free sample pack. If you go to drinkelement.com slash Laura Spath. And that's why I get to hang out with you this evening. So thank you to element for uh, sponsoring this video. Let's see if I can figure out how to get this thing off the screen. Okay. Look at me go. I'm like a real professional now. So let's see if I can figure out lots of people uh, Jennifer said, grapefruit is my favorite. Uh, Anna is like me and she loves the unflavored. <laughs> Somebody else does not said it tastes like a uh, colonoscopy prep. So if you, uh, you got to figure out, but that's why that sample pack is so helpful because you get one of everything and they also have a hundred percent money back guarantee. So if you get one and you're like, wow, that's just not my flavor, they'll send you a new flavor or they'll give you your money back. No questions asked, but, uh, I'm a big fan. And we use them all the time. So let me see. Okay, this is the interesting part. Let me see if I can find some questions. Um, what's tell me to? Oh, actually, I didn't even say this yet. Tomorrow is Chris's birthday. So tell Chris happy birthday. We are gonna celebrate. He is gonna have like a special Wagyu steak for his birthday dinner. Then we're gonna have some of that oven baked cheese that we love. So we're gonna have fried cheese and like a fancy steak and have a good birthday celebration. So you'll have to wish him happy birthday. Um, David is asking, do you have to exercise on carnivore? I do, but it slows weight loss. And that's part of the problem. Exercise and building muscle and exercise can sometimes cause inflammation in your body. You have to eat more when you're exercising. If you want to grow muscle, you get hungrier when you're exercising. So you definitely don't have to exercise on carnivore to lose weight. I lost all my weight without exercising. Um, and if you've known me for any amount of time, we know how much I hate exercise it's been six years now. And I would say maybe if you added up all of the weeks that I was like exercising, you would have like nine months of the last six years that I exercised. Not that great at it. And that's not a brag at all. Um, but 
weight loss does not happen from running on the treadmill like crazy. You are never going to outrun all the food that you're eating. Uh, and you also are never going to, um, it's not going to, it's not needed for weight loss. Now, what it is needed for though, is for muscle gain. And obviously you can raise your met metabolism and your basal, basal, Chris is better at this than me, basal metabolic rate by having more muscles. So the more muscle your body has, the more fat that you're going to burn and the more energy you're going to utilize. So muscles helpful for those things. And then obviously like the most important thing as we age is that we get enough muscle. You know, we lose a lot of muscle mass as we age. And also as you're losing weight, you lose fat, but also if you're under eating for too long, you can lose that muscle mass. So I obviously would recommend, um, some type of muscle building over time. The last thing we want to do is to be, you know, older and need assistance. And we, you know, um, my mom is always telling me like stand up straight when I'm walking through the grocery store and don't lean over the cart because you don't want your body to uh, end up in a position where you're having to use that. My grandfather is in his nineties and he is strong because he has worked in the farm. He has bailed hay, worked with cows, jumped fences, like chopped wood. And he still chops wood to this day and he's 92 and we need muscle mass in order to do that. Um, and so that is definitely a very important part of long-term health, but it's not a part of, it doesn't have to be a part of your weight loss journey. The only thing I'll say is that if you want to reverse diabetes and if you want to lower your insulin and your A1C, walking can be a big part of that. You have to burn off stored sugar. And so while I am terrible about exercise, Chris, uh, my husband who was type two diabetic, he had an A1C of 11.9 and he got it all the way down to 4.9. Um, and he was on all kinds of medications before he has incorporated a walk starting at like 20 minutes, but now he probably walks for 45 minutes to an hour every day. It's just his something he does. But if you are trying to lose weight, um, and lower your A1C, just going for a walk of 15, 20, 30 minutes after a meal can be very effective in helping to reduce your blood sugar. So make sure you are utilizing those types of things. Um, if that's your goal, but I understand it's kind of why, like either I'm super dialed in with exercise or like I have to be, you know, dialed in with food. My biggest advice too, is like when life gets hard, you need to focus on only one thing. And for me, that's always food. And so this week I've been to the gym, took the 5 30 AM workout class, um, with some friends. So I got up at 4 50 and I went to the gym two times this week. That's the first time in a very long time. Okay. But when I'm traveling, when I'm life gets hard, when I get stressed out, the first thing that goes is the exercise because I just have to hang on to like making better food choices so that everything and all the hard work that I've done, doesn't throw all the way out the window. So that is definitely uh, a big part of it. Okay. Now see, this is where I'm learning about the comments in this new platform. Um, so I lift five days a week. Don't let the carb crowd make you think you need carb load. It is a myth. Absolutely. There are so many great people who talk about building muscle on keto. I would recommend checking out like Robert Sykes, who's the keto savage. He literally wrote a book on bodybuilding and building muscle on a keto diet and not needing carbs for that. So you definitely don't need carbs for energy and carbs to build muscle. Um, but it can be helpful walking, we need muscle, but you don't necessarily need carbs for all of that. Um, let's see. Francis said, I know you use the two meats per plate to create a side dish concept for your brain, but do you eat any side dishes like deviled eggs? Yeah. You know what? I person, I don't eat a hard boiled eggs out of personal preference, but I think a deviled egg, especially one that you make yourself could be very helpful. Sometimes my little side is just a piece of cheese. Um, or I'll put like runny egg yolks on the side if I want to dip something into it, but that's a, that's a great option. I would just, I've seen, I think Nisha Berry does, uh, deviled eggs with like a bacon mayo inside. So you might want to be aware of like what kind of, um, mayonnaise that you're using. Jade said one January is one year carnivore for me. Best thing I ever did for myself. Congratulations, Jade. I'm so happy to hear that you stuck with it and you've Changed your life and changed your health. Congratulations. Um, let's see here. This is where I'm getting excited. Why are... Um, so 
Sorry, this is me getting used to this chat, guys. You're going to have to bear with me, okay? Um, can gastric sleeves do carnivore? Yeah, that's a common question. And it really will just, um, you have to be so careful with how much you're eating and how often. I know people have been very successful after having some type of, um, sorry, I don't, I clicked on the wrong one. After having some type of surgery, just you're going to have to eat way more often. I eat twice a day. My husband eats once a day. You will not be able to eat enough in that one or two sittings. So kind of ignore all of the intermittent fasting advice for a while. You still could incorporate an occasional longer fast, but your daily life is just going to have to be eating a lot more often. And even if you haven't had any surgeries of some kind, some people just can't eat a lot in one sitting. And so you have to really be careful about that uh, and make sure that you are uh, eating enough protein throughout the day. And it's unfortunately, sometimes you just have to track a little bit just to make sure that you're eating enough, but you really need to make sure that you're eating at least one gram of protein per pound of lean body mass. And I think Jennifer, I clicked on your comment and then accidentally clicked it off. So Jennifer said, I'm losing hair significantly. I'm eating 150 grams of protein a day. What am I doing wrong? So number one, is the protein is what I would have asked you and suggested. So it's good that you're eating 150 grams of protein. I, the next thing I would do just to rule things out is to just get your blood work checked and get your hormone checked, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're doing anything wrong. And I know we hate hearing that. So get everything checked to make sure. However, um, anytime your body goes through a really big change, it kind of reacts by shedding hair. It's why women have postpartum hair loss because their body has a major change and a major hormone change. I had a really serious car accident in high school and about three or four months later, I started losing a lot of hair from this traumatic accident that my body went through. People end up talking about, they get sick of some type of sickness, right? And they, um, and they end up losing a lot of hair a few months after that. So any big change that your body is going through, unfortunately, it kind of just reacts by protecting its more vital functions and our hair is such an emotional thing for us, but it's often the first to go. So check your protein, check your hormones, make sure all of that's in line. And then I would think about like, what were you doing consistently three or four months ago um, that typically hair loss is several months delayed. And so think about where you were at. Maybe you're eating 150 grams now. Were you eating that three to four months ago? If you've been losing a lot of weight, our fat stores a lot of hormones. And so as we lose all of that weight, our hormones do some really funky things at times. Uh, and so that's, we just have to be careful about that. And I'm really sorry, but I would definitely get some blood work checked and then um, give it some time. Yeah, I, I went through that. I had that video about it. Mine was hormone related. And then also just like too many stressors. Stress is not bad for your body, but too many compounding stressors ends up being a really big problem. So lack of sleep, under eating, over fasting, over exercising, like fasting is not a bad thing, but combining it with over exercising and all of these other things and too many stressors um, on your body at the same time is ends up being what the problem is. Uh, let me see here. Cass said, just eat carnivore was the best of advice. One thing to follow. I'm 11 days in and it has been a miracle for my pain. I was diagnosed with arthritis as a kid. And in just these 11 days, the pain has lessened. That is incredible. That's amazing. And that is, like, there's a lot more nuance to a carnivore diet. But at the end of the day, if the only thing that you did was just stay carnivore, you are one step closer to hitting your goals and you are working on that plan for consistency. It is too often that our biggest focus is like, how can I do the most extreme thing to get me the quickest results? And I have been in that situation where I do something extreme, I lose a bunch of weight, and then I always, 100% of the time, gain it all back again because it wasn't in a way that was sustainable for me and my life. And so doing it in a way that is fits in your lifestyle and just helps you be consistent no matter what. Um, is the most important thing for sure. If you couldn't do carnivore, say due to budget, what is the next healthiest way of eating, do you think? I guess I would be curious about what the budget constraints are that are, are holding you back. I think for, I mean, 
it doesn't have to be for everybody, but there's a lot of, uh, for, for me personally, like I spend way less money on, um, meat than I used to on my previous diet, just because of the snacks that I was eating and the amount of times that I was eating per day. There are ways you can reduce your budget by incorporating eggs and che- like you don't have to live on steaks all the time. You can have eggs and pork and chicken. Like those are all things that are really good for the budget. You don't have to buy all of the fancy things and the supplements and the other stuff. You don't have to eat out. There's ways to reduce that. Also, I would wonder like what is the cost of other things like healthcare or doctors or other things that you're spending money on? Money that we used to spend just on prescriptions. I used to spend money on seeing a colorectal specialist and um, all kinds of tests, like thousands and thousands of dollars for that on um, doctors and hormones. I had gallstones. I was getting ultrasounds, like insane amounts of money that now I have saved by just being healthier. But if, but if you want to eat a vegetable, there's nothing wrong with eating a vegetable. I don't think there's like a way of life that's cheaper necessarily. Like anything that cuts out junk and gives you more whole foods and foods that are more nutrient based is the way to go. So I would just say like, get as far as you can. But I would I would think maybe rethink what you think carnivore is or rethink things a little bit to find a way to make something fit in your budget. But like if you want to buy some lettuce, that's fine. I've probably spent more money on throwing lettuce in the trash because it went rotten than I ever did on actually eating it. And I, I would also encourage you just to say like, if you're comparing spaghetti to steak, spaghetti is going to sound a lot cheaper in the moment. But I would also say like, look at your week over week, spaghetti to steak, steak is more expensive, but week over week, if I'm incorporating other budget friendly foods and I'm shopping sales and I'm not like obsessing about the grass finished organic from the shipping and then the special boxes that I have to order and all the others, like just buy meat at Walmart. And that is a thousand percent better than anything else that you've, than I was ever doing in my life. We have to kind of like take a step back for a second and say, what's a better choice, even though somebody else might not be telling you that it's the perfect choice. Um, and then Um, I would encourage you to look at your budget week over week when you're taking out the sides, when you're taking out, probably you're not going to be eating as many times a day and you're taking out all the snacks and the desserts and the expensive drinks, all of that stuff adds up a lot. And I would, um, I don't know too many people that really do think that carnivore is more expensive for their diet. Most people that I know, um, uh, struggle, like say that they've saved a lot of money going carnivore. Um, Anna said under eating, I think is more of a danger for most people than overeating. I totally agree. And even if your weight loss is stalled or you're not losing weight, we always just think like, I got to cut, I got to cut. That's not necessarily the case. I think one of the problems with carnivore is that meat is very satiating, which means that I talked about this a little bit on Instagram today. Um, I had four eggs and a quarter cup of bacon and a quarter cup of cheese and some butter for breakfast this morning. And it's a huge plate of bacon and eggs. That was like 600 calories. Okay. And obviously we're not necessarily like obsessed with calories, but you have to realize that those 600 calories, like I maybe wouldn't have been hungry for the rest of the day, but that's not enough food for me. And over time, my metabolism will slow down. My body will start negatively reacting to things simply because of the fact that I'm not eating enough and I'm not fueling it properly. And too many people um, are under eating because the food is so satisfying or they're just not used to eating a lot in one sitting and that's okay. You can incorporate multiple meals a day. Um, You can incorporate a protein, a clean protein shake occasionally if that would be helpful for you if you're really struggling not to eat enough. But the my one of my biggest tips is if you're struggling to eat enough food in a day and you just feel like you can't choke down anymore, you got to instantly switch and get the biggest bang for your buck in terms of calories. Ground beef does not have a lot of calories and it does not have as much protein. Switching to even some chicken or some pork or something else, like find a way to get more bang for your buck with your bite, right? How can I get more nutrients per bite, more calories per bite, rather than not just, um, eating ground beef and and stuff like that. Um, Brent said advice for someone who wants to stick to carnivore, but my wife and kids still eat uh, an American diet. That is very, very, very challenging. I do not envy 
that. Um, I have been very blessed along the way that Chris is doing this with me. We ended up switching our kids a lot of the way over because of the fact that we didn't want that junk food in our house and it was too tempting. So first and foremost, I would try to simplify your meal times. Everybody in the family, even if they're eating the standard American diet, needs meat right? And you just maybe need more meat than they do. And you don't need all the sides that they do. So I would try to simplify meals so that you're almost like, kind of like what we do is we, we cook meat for everybody. And then I just throw in a couple sides or a couple extra things. I don't know if you're the one who does all the cooking or not, but even asking, you know, if it's your wife or you could offer to grill more often, and then she can worry about the sides for her and the kids. It's kind of how we do things when we have guests come over. It's like, Hey, I'm going to cook a bunch of meats. And then if you guys want some sides for you and your kids, like feel free to bring those, but we're providing the meat. So you can kind of do that in your own family so that you don't constantly feel like you're, you know, having multiple meals in the same um, meal time. And I think the other thing is finding a community, whether that's online or on Facebook or in person, reach out to people and find somebody that you can connect with and that can you can vent to, that you can relate to, that's going to help encourage you because unfortunately... A lot of times in our real life, people are saying like, oh, it's okay. Just have one. You can have something. Just have dessert. Just have some chips. Like you don't have people in your life that are encouraging you to not do those things. And so I would like really, really focus on trying to find a community um, to help out. And speaking of which, who here is from locals? Anyways, that's uh, I didn't mean to segue like that, but it works out. I see there Miss Vivi. She is from locals. There are free groups all over the place. You can post in Facebook and just say like, hey, this is the state and the town that I live in. Somebody come hang out with me. Who wants to meet up for dinner? Some of my best friends right now in real life are all people that I've met on the internet. And I travel a lot for my job. And every time I go to a new city, I'm like, hey, who wants to have dinner tonight? And I'm finding people that kind of live near and around me. And I'm able to connect and just hang out and, um, uh, and just meet up with them and have dinner with them and, and be, or even be able to talk to somebody on the internet. Good. I see lots of people over here from them. And that's, that's exactly like, it doesn't have to be my group or anybody's group on the internet. You need a place to find people who are going to encourage you. The only thing I'll say about some of the Facebook groups is just, they get a little culty with like, that's not carnivore. You can't do that. You have to be perfect. You have to eat this way. Like if you're not going to eat organic grass finished, you can't eat pork or you might as well go back to eating Twinkies. Like I get those comments every day all over the internet of that's not perfect carnivore enough. You're using seasonings. You're not a carnivore. You might as well go back to eating Twinkies. Like it's kind of insane. So find people in your life that are going to encourage you. I have a group where I do live streams like this at least every week. Um, and I'm able, I know here, and I'm so sorry, especially because I'm learning this new system. Like, um, to, I can't answer every question on here. You could send a super chat and I'll, it'll pop up to the top of my screen and I will answer it right now. However, um, in locals, there's just such a smaller group of people where I can answer every question. It's also like a private Facebook group, but you don't have to be on Facebook or Instagram or any of that kind of stuff. And so people make posts, they share their wins, they share their meals, they ask questions. I can answer 10, 50, what, however many questions that you have, I will answer them all. And it's really helpful for me because number one, it obviously supports my family. There's like a free way to join. But if you want to post stuff and ask me questions, it's a $10 uh, uh, supporter fee. But that honestly, more than anything, lets me help people who want to be helped and are not just like going to go crazy on the internet or like they've invested something. They're supporting my family and I can't go through DMs. I'll tell you what, the, the porn spam bots and in my Instagram DMs is out of control that I can't even find like normal people's comments because it's all these like bots that are like trying to get you to go to their OnlyFans. It's so weird. And then YouTube is just people screaming at me all the time. So it is 100% a way for me to help people to answer people. And then also they, everybody posts all their stuff. I post something in there that's for free to read every single morning and hopefully encourages you or helps you think. And then everybody else can post their own stuff um, and all that good stuff. So come hang out with us. We would love to have you. Yeah. Sometimes the carnivore zealots are there. The, what is locals? It's that it's a website. You can go to lauraeastbath.locals.com and then eventually they have an app that you can download it is easier to sign up through the browser and then you can um, 
come in after that. All right, let's, uh, I try to be very upfront about this. What do you drink on carnivore besides electrolytes, um, which are sponsoring this video. You can check out that link. Um, but I drink water, I drink electrolytes, and then I do drink diet soda, which is obviously most people, some people drink coffee and they drink co uh, coffee regularly. I have never been a coffee fan. I didn't drink coffee before. I don't drink coffee now, but, um, sometimes what gets me through the day is a diet Coke, or now I've cut out all caffeine in the evenings. And my new GM is like a sugar, zero sugar root beer. I bumped into somebody in the parking lot last night and I was carrying like root beer was on sale, uh, four for $10 or whatever. So I had like four, six packs of root beer. And so woman saw me, she's like, oh, you're the carnivore girl. You're car you're Laura. And I was like, yep, me and my root beer, like just busted. But it's, listen, this is where I'm saying you can't sometimes, especially in the beginning, the only thing that saved me from having my like nightly pint of ice cream, because it was a nightly pint of ice cream was having like a half frozen Diet Coke in the evenings. And now I'm old and I'm almost 40 and I can't drink caffeine in the evenings anymore. And so like a half frozen sugar-free root beer is like my saving grace. V Most people disagree with me. Then don't do it. You don't have to do it. I'm not encouraging you to do it. It's literally all I have left in the world. Don't take it from me, okay? I have gone without it. There has been zero difference. That's all I gotta say. Yes, the NW zero sugar root beer. I have tried Zevia. Um, yes, I have tried Zevia. It is not the same. It is not the same. I'm sorry. And I'm a bottle girl. Like I need a bottle so I don't have to drink it all at once. It's the whole thing. So don't take my advice on this, please. I'm just telling you, this is the type of way that you have. I am perfect in every other way. Well, not according to the internet and the spices and all that stuff. You gotta do what works for you. Oh, I lost my comment. Okay. Amy said, love your old, almost 40. I'm almost 16 next month. Well, Chris will be 49 tomorrow. And then I will be 39 next month. So then we're, you know, next year, a year from tomorrow, he'll turn 50 and then I'll turn 40. So we're going to go big uh, that year. Right now, 39 and 49 are just like, yeah, those are normal years. We're, we're keeping it low key. Like we normally don't do much for birthdays. Next year, though, we're going to have to do something pretty fancy with uh, him turning 50 and me turning 40 in the same in the same year. OK, let me figure out. I saw a question. Now I got to find it. OK, can you eat Greek yogurt? So technically, Greek yogurt would be considered carnivore, but it also is going to have more a lot of carbs in it. It also can cause like too much dairy could cause some digestive issues, some inflammation issues if you have. Hashimoto's or thyroid issues, you want to avoid eating like a ton of excess dairy. Um, so be aware of that. It kind of depends on your goals. I have no lots of people who are doing carnivore, not for weight loss, and they incorporate the yogurt because it gives them extra protein and it gives them some carbs that they want, or they're trying to build muscle and they're using that for, for a little bit of carbs. I would never incorporate it on a regular basis because I don't, it would make me gain weight. I would get puffy. I probably would have breakouts from just, I'd rather eat cheese than yogurt, but, um, I do, my kids eat Greek yogurt. I got a Ninja creamy recently, which we're testing out a couple of different things on. And I'll take the, uh, Chobani zero sugar Greek yogurts. And I just literally put those into the thing and freeze it. And then I make my kids like ice cream um, and make them ice cream out of just that Greek yogurt. So it's, you can incorporate it, but, um, <laughs> you can incorporate, I see, oh my God. you don't have, nobody's forcing you to drink diet soda. Don't worry. Those studies are un unfounded. Okay. It's fine. Um, so that's, a, that's a big part of it. I think Greek yogurt can be incorporated, but again, if weight loss is your goal, you're probably, it's not something that you're going to want to have on a regular basis. And I would say the same thing goes for cottage cheese. It might technically be carnivore, probably could have it occasionally and it's no big deal. I use a quarter cup in a batch of egg bites that I would split with Penelope. So I have it slightly occasionally, um, but it's not going to help you with your weight loss goals if you are eating it on a regular basis. Oh, that's a good one. I like this. Um, what are your current fitness goals? That's a good question. Currently... 
I still go through this. Okay. I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like anybody who's ever lost a lot of weight, there is always this. And especially those of us who have lost weight and gained it and lost weight and gained it and lost weight and gained it. I still have this fear in my mind of like, what if I gain all my weight back or like, I'm scared of gaining all my weight back. And I still deal with that. Sometimes it's a really maintenance is like, we were talking about this in locals this morning with somebody saying like maintenance is a roller coaster because you can't just like, Oh, I hit my goal weight. I'm going to go back to normal again. But you also don't have the same like motivation of the scale that's driving you anymore. And it's a wild situation that I like hate to talk about it. Cause some people are like, well, I'd love to have that problem. You know, it's just, it's a, it is honestly, it's a roller coaster. And so I do live in this world of like, don't gain all your weight back. But at the same time, you know, my biggest focus right now is um, building muscle. You know, I have not focused on that nearly as much as I should have in my life. And I am concerned as I get older that I would need more muscle mass. My arms and my legs are not toned and I would like more muscle mass in those things. I still have excess skin in my arms and legs. I had that removed for my stomach, um, but I don't. Um, I still have excess. Somebody commented on a video that they're like, why are your arms so big when your stomach is small? And I'm like, cause I had my excess skin removed from my stomach and not from my arms. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but I do hope that like weightlifting and over time, the shape of my body would change some. And so I'm just trying to make that my biggest goal right now. Um, but it's w- when you have this fear of gaining weight, forgetting about the scale for a while and then eating more in order to build muscle is just a really hard thing to do. So I'm trying to not let that stress me out or worry about it in any way. It's hard. Yeah. Um, is there an app that will help tracking protein and fats? I use carb manager. I know other people like chronometer and other few things like that. Um, but they are not, uh, I just, I just like carb managers because I what I'm used to, but, and I, I would say like 90% of the time I don't track. Chris always knows I'm serious. If I'm tracking like this week, I have been in like full beast mode. I'm going to the gym two times. I'm tracking all my food. I'm like, you know, beast mode. And so then I start tracking and I'll tell you this. Sometimes just the act of tracking helps me not snack or like grab that extra piece of cheese or like wander to the kitchen between meals because I'm like, oh, you got to go put this in your app. And it's like, never mind. And it kind of holds me accountable a little bit. So I like it. It's the carb manager is the easiest for me because it has a carnivore option. I actually don't click on the carnivore option because then it says zero carbs. And I am, uh, I need like wins. And if you go over zero carbs, then it gives you like a red symbol of like, you failed, you got car, you got one car, which is in eggs. And so, um, I don't, I put it on like high protein, uh, like the high, high protein, moderate, something where it lets me, it tells me I can have 25 carbs a day, which I never have that much. I just don't want full keto. I'm not trying to go full, 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 full fat keto. Thank you. Metalhead hippie. Good to see you back. You were on the last one. I appreciate it. Thank you. Stay healthy. Rock on you too. Appreciate the super chat. How is Chris doing? He is doing amazing. He is seven weeks post-op. He is back at the gym. He goes to the gym every day. He is just doing like weightlifting, arms, legs, all that good stuff. Uh, He's taking it a little easy on his core. He's sitting in the sauna afterwards. And then he probably right now came, the kids and him are back from jujitsu for the kids. He's not training jujitsu yet. And then he goes for a walk every night for 45 minutes to an hour, walks, you know, several miles. Um, so he feels very good back in his routine. We are like solidly back in an awesome routine. Tomorrow is his birthday. If you missed that earlier, um, tomorrow is Chris's birthday. And so we'll be celebrating him this weekend with like some fancy steaks and some cheese and all that good stuff, but he is doing really awesome. His plan is to just still continue to take it easy from jujitsu until maybe for like another month, we have a family vacation planned in February. And so I think after um, our family vacation, he's planning on potentially going back to jujitsu again. So he's doing really awesome. Very, I think he was in this fear mode, which everybody goes through who has skin removal or a tummy tuck or something. That's like, is this like, is this, is this it? Like you have puffiness and you're a little like uneven and you're puffy. And he was kind of panicking about that, but 
Every all the puffiness is slowly starting to come down and he's feeling a lot better about that right now. So yeah, I'll post some fun stuff tomorrow about him for his birthday. Um, let me see here. I try to catch up. Awesome. Sarah said, I started carnivore on January 1st and I'm already down eight pounds. That is incredible. Congratulations, Sarah. I'm so happy for you. Keep it going. I love that. And I love that you just said it proudly. Sometimes I had people in uh, my, my locals group who were saying like, oh, I've lost all this weight, but it's only water weight. You know, I'll, I'm, ex I'm excited though. And I'm like, of course, we should never discount water weight. You know, what water weight represents is inflammation. It represents bloating. It represents digestive issues. It just represents pain in your body. Imagine, and it's still weight that you were carrying on your body. And so now we, we've reduced it. We're healing. We're feeling better. We can get more active and we can do other things now that we are losing all of that. So totally, totally. Chris is in this chat. He's in the kitchen too. I think he's making the kids dinner since they just got, I can hear everybody moving around out there. So that's fine. Um, Rita said, do you test ketones? You know what? This is another one of those things that like Chris knows I'm in beast mode if I like start checking my ketones because normally I don't. Um, I have the last couple of days. I don't check my ketones most of the time because they're not that interesting. Um, super high ketones is not something that I have unless I'm fasting a lot. Um, I don't eat insanely high fat. I just eat, I mean, I eat a normal amount of fat, but if I am not uh, you know, if I'm eating two meals a day and a good amount of protein, then my ketones might be like 0 0.7, 0 0.5. Like I'm in ketosis, but you know, it kind of, I like it though. It keeps me accountable. Yeah. Anna just said, I like checking ketones because it helps keep me accountable for sure. If I'm feeling very snacky, I'll like go check my blood sugar and my ketones. Um, also in the morning, I mean, my glucose is pretty much in the nineties. Most mornings, you know, it's in the low nineties maybe 89 to 92, somewhere around there. And my ketones are like 0 0.5, 0 0.7. There's a lot of people who would say, oh my gosh, I'm doing something wrong. I'm not in deep ketosis. And the internet told me I have to be in deep ketosis to lose weight. You don't, you really don't. Deep ketosis can mean that you're in fat burning mode. It also could just mean you're eating a lot of fat or you've been under eating. If I'm under eating for too many days in a row, my ketones start going really high. And it means that my body's not being fueled enough and you have to be very careful about that. So use it for motivation. It's a great tool, especially glucose. If you're trying to reverse your insulin, if you're trying to reverse your A1C, understanding your glucose can be really helpful, but it doesn't have to be this obsessive thing. And also it's not a direct correlation. This is what I want to tell people. It is not a direct correlation between high ketones and weight loss. It just doesn't work that way. And I think the hard part is as a society, we very naturally want to buy something that's going to help us be successful. We want to buy a ketone meter. We want to buy a protein shake. We want to buy a cookbook. We want to buy a something that that is what we were missing from before. That's this is going to give us better results. It's why things like South Beach diet and other diets do really well. South Beach is going to sell you a cookbook and a program and some little cute containers that you put all your stuff in. And it's like, oh, I bought this stuff. That means I'm going to be successful. It is it's just a weird way of how our society works. It doesn't have to be that. Um, it doesn't have to be that. It's not, it's not going to work like that, right? Which is why I try to tell people at first, don't go investing in a bunch of stuff. Don't go buy a bunch of things. Don't go spend a bunch of money. Just start eating meat. Do what you got to do, do your best for a while. And then over time you can make some adjustments. And if you're like, Hey, I really would love to know what my glucose numbers are. Then you can worry about getting one of those things later, but you don't need to have this like really big shopping list before you start carnivore. Cause I promise you that those things that are whatever's on that list is not going to help you um, be more successful. It's about creating a way for you to be consistent uh, over time. So, yeah. Yeah. If I'm not drinking enough, my ketones are high. So people get dehydrated, your ketones can go higher. There's a lot of reasons why your ketones could go higher. It's really good information and it helps to keep me accountable. Uh, and I am just a very obsessive person with numbers. So I sometimes use that to my advantage, but also I need somebody to tell me just to like chill out because the numbers don't necessarily cor correlate to different things. Um, 
Uh, Rita says, oh, will my blood sugar go up if I'm under eating too? So yes and no. Um, if you are newer to doing this, when you are fasting for a long period of time, your body is then tapping or if you're under eating. So if your body doesn't have enough energy and nutrients, it's going to go looking for energy and nutrients. And a lot of where we want it to go is we want it to um, find it in your stored fat and in your liver. You have non-alcoholic fatty liver syndrome. If you're insulin resistant, you are storing a lot of that sugar, right? I'm not the most scientific way of saying it, but deep in your organs, sugar is stored. And that is why people like Dr. Jason Fung recommend you doing a 36 hour fast in order for you to access that really deep, this side, I don't know what side it's on, deep stored sugar that you need to burn out because it's often why like people can go carnivore and they're like, my baseline glucose is not lowering. It's not lowering. It's staying the same because you haven't really cleaned out all of that deep stored sugar. And so that's one of the most important things that you need to do. Um, somebody said, what about longer fasts, like 48 and 72 hours? Say if you are trying to really access and lower your A1C and re reverse your type two diabetes, it is so effective um, at doing that. We got to access all that. So if you're fasting for a long period of time and your body is spiking its glucose, it's because likely because you're tapping into that deep stored sugar and it's spiking your glucose. So that can be very normal, especially if you're newer to this, if you're still insulin resistant, but it's also necessary, uh, in those ways. And I think longer fast like that can be extremely beneficial for reversing type two diabetes. It's helped. It's hundred percent. My mom could not get her glucose to be normalized until she started incorporating longer fasts. Chris could not get off of his diabetes medication until he started incorporating longer fasts. Um, but I think the, as important as I just explained, fasting is not doing it too often and not under eating between your fasts is equally as, is very negative right? I think that if you are trying, I know too many people who try to do like a 48 hour fast and then eat and then 48 hour fast and then eat and then for, like that's too much. And you're not giving your body enough nutrients. And then over time, your metabolism is going to slow down. Your hair is going to fall out. You're going to lose muscle. Like your body will start losing your hormones because you're fasting too much. Um, and you're not nourishing your body enough in between. So it, it really does have to be a balance. And then thoughts on dry fasting. I did it once it was torture and I found no additional benefits for it. So unless you had like a very specific reason as to why you needed to do that, um, I don't know. I wouldn't do it again personally. And I, I haven't found any reason for it. Um, personally, I think there's a lot more benefit. You're going to feel a lot better and be able to do it better in the meantime. Yeah, Rita, as a follow up to that, that makes a lot of sense. Ketones are 1.9, but my blood sugars have gone into the one teens and 129, right? That's your body's burning out all that sugar. So just be aware of that. Don't under eat in the meantime, but you can keep incorporating those longer fasts um, and it will help bring that down. So Ms. Adrian said, I'm scared. Okay, let's give her some encouragement. This is the problem, I think, is that we make it the internet, me included, share so much information that it can feel so overwhelming and we get a little nervous to start or we worry something's going to happen. It really doesn't have to be like that. It just start with one meal, eat some bacon and eggs and your next meal, you can just eat a steak. And it's like, what's going to happen to my cholesterol? What's going to happen to this over time? You just got to try it and find out. I promise. It's like, if you're feeling a little bad, maybe take some electrolytes. Like, we have to stop jumping into these crazy extremes. And then also if you're doing it one way and it's not working, we have to learn to make a small tweak that still fits within your lifestyle, not to then try the other extreme or try the other extreme. We really got to find a balance and just make those small tweaks, but take a lot of that pressure off yourself, Adrian. I promise you it's, it's, it will not be as bad as you thought it would be. Um, just try to take it one meal at a time, one day at a time, uh, and you will get there. Can you please explain the different types of fat and their effects on our system? Um, so some things like butter and animal fat, maybe this is what you're talking about, like pork fat or beef fat or like butter are definitely going to be, um, 
your body is going to process them differently. Typically things like if you're trying to, like, I think you said you're, um, having hard times with loose stools that can be from just eating too much in one sitting or eating usually as too much animal fat. I mean, I think butter and beef fat would cause that issue for me too, personally. Um, so you definitely, it does pass, but I don't really necessarily know if it would be caused by a certain type. I know people that were doing a lot of the butter stuff previously were having issues with loose stools. And then also, um, yeah, Chris mentioned rendered fat. So if you're eating like ground beef and then you pour the fat over top of it and then just like eat it or drink it. Like, I don't, I would poop my pants. Like, I don't know a lot of people that would poop, wouldn't poop their pants from that. Um, so, but the, any type of rendered fat like that is going to cause it. Yeah. Chris is the smarter one than me. You know that this is why, this is why he has to be here because he's the smarter one. Um, Brian said, Laura, what's your favorite butter? Do you just buy the store brand or you go with Kerrygold? So I, this definitely, uh, makes me a crazy carnivore, but we don't use a lot of butter. If you can believe it, I cook my eggs with butter and I'll put like, uh, maybe a tablespoon on top of a steak and that's about it. So I get Costco butter. I did in the past. I love like there, some grocery stores sell like a whipped salted butter and it looks like whiter and it's like fluffier and creamier and it kind of looks like a whipped cream cheese or something. And I use that on, um, like, I love that on a steak, but we actually just weren't using that much butter. And so I quit buying it and I buy the Costco ones and then I put it in the freezer and I just pull out one stick at a time. But we, I guess I cook shrimp in some butter occasionally, but we really just don't, um, eat much butter. Thank you, Rita. You have been so sweet this evening. So I hope I answered all your questions. Thank you very much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Um, Amy said thoughts on feta cheese. I probably eat feta cheese way more than I eat butter. I don't know what it is, but we do a uh, Greek style chicken a lot. And so I put feta cheese on chicken thighs quite a bit. And then I love having feta cheese on my steak. Um, so I'll just sprinkle some. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Vaughn said it best. Eat the meat that you love. So I'll put some feta cheese on my steak and that ends up being really delicious as well. So uh, I probably eat way more feta cheese than I do, but lately I've been trying to measure it. So I don't, uh, I don't eat too much, but there are crazy people out there, uh, with the butter. Yes. I saw a comment about that. Ooh, good. Making a taco bowl recipe for dinner tonight. That is our favorite. Actually, that's, I think that's what the kids are eating. We had that a couple days ago and they had some leftovers for this evening. So they're having, uh, having tacos. Uh, I saw a couple comments. I got to find it. Oh, about Jen said, thank you. I ordered several gardeners, Wisconsin cheeses, and I love it. Good. We actually have another order that's coming any day now. They have a new flavor of their um, oven baked cheese. They have like a jalapeno flavor. I think tomorrow for Chris's birthday, we're going to eat the bacon flavored cheese, but it's the one I just like, it's a certain type of cheese. Somebody's like, I tried to fry cheese in a skillet like, like you do, and it turned into a melted mess. What did I do wrong? And I was like, no, no, I'm sorry to say this, but it has to be a specific kind of cheese that does this. So yeah, we love it. Love it. Love it. I have about seven minutes left and then I'm going to go hang out with the kids. So, uh, let's see here. Jonathan said, what about seafood? Any you stay away from and why I don't eat fish, but that's just out of like personal preference. Chris teases me. Like I had a bad experience. <laughs> before. And so I just don't like fish. He loves sea bass. He loves, you know, halibut. He loves cod, that kind of stuff. He's not a big fan of salmon in general. I eat a lot of shrimp. I love crab legs on like holidays and fancy occasions. We eat some crab legs. Um, I love some, you know, like when I'm on a work trip and my job is paying, I might order the oysters. So all that good stuff. Uh, let me see here. Um, in and out. I don't know if this is the real in and out, but they sent $2. So thank you very much. Uh, do you ever get night sweats? So I do, if I am burning off too much sugar, so I don't as much anymore, but if I were to eat carbs or something then it, my body runs hotter. And so I end up getting like really crazy night sweats. If I eat too late at night or I eat too much beef at night, honestly, I think it really is just like my body is working hard to burn all of that off. So if you are getting night sweats, I would try 
eating a little bit earlier in the day. And I would try, if you do have to eat at night, make it some bacon and eggs or make it some chicken or something that almost like your body doesn't have to burn as hot to digest. But I get too much energy from beef. If I eat like my meatballs recipe late at night, um, uh, Shawnita said, I'm making some of your meatballs as a side to my steak tonight. Awesome. So if I had like a big steak and a whole bunch of meatballs at night, it, that beef has so much B12 in it, I think, or like B vitamins in it. I'm pretty sure that it just like keeps me up too much at night, if that makes sense. So um, I try to keep all that stuff earlier in the day, but the night sweats could also just be from eating too much at night, potentially, and your body is just like running a little hotter, trying to burn that off again. So I hope that's, um, I hope that helps you. If not, you could try, I don't know. I would say electrolytes, but I'm not really sure how that would work. Um, let's see. Good. I absolutely love your bacon cheeseburger meatballs. I've made them three times already. Please more recipes. Good. So I'm Chris and I have been trying to think of like other recipes to do. So give me ideas. Like what other kind of stuff are you wanting to make or struggling on? Also, I saw some comments earlier about like cooking tips and videos. We're going to, our goal is to film some of that this weekend. I still work a job and it's very challenging, but uh, Monday is a holiday. And so I have a three day weekend this weekend and our goal is to knock out a bunch of videos to plan for that. So we shall see. Um, but I'm doing my best. How long did it take for you to start seeing results? That is a hard question. Um, you know, Chris and I were eating so terribly before and we had so much weight to lose and we were, it just was going from an extreme. I mean, we were eating literally nothing but fast food and junk food all the way to eating like keto and then carnivore. And so we started losing weight right away and definitely saw a difference. But the longer that you have been keto or I mean unhealthy, the longer you've been unhealthy and the more restricted your body has been, the more healing that in the more time it's going to take for you to start seeing results. If you don't have a lot of weight to lose or you don't have any major things going on, or you you've been unhealthy for, a, you know, my mom had Hashimoto's for um, 30 years and it's going to take her a lot longer to heal that than it is for somebody who was just diagnosed with Hashimoto six months ago. And that person might be able to reverse it very quickly when somebody like my mom, it's going to take her a much longer time to do that. So um, I think how long is it? How strict are you being and how unhealthy were you to start? And I think those are kind of the big questions that you're going to have to ask yourself, but hopefully you feel better within like a week that should happen. Ben. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, thoughts on Fresca sparkling soda water. The only thing that scares me is the ingredients. I don't know the, is it cause it has natural answer. Does it have natural flavors in it or what is it? Um, I don't drink to me. This is where my terribleness is. To me, the any type of like sparkling water just tastes like the soda machine ran out. Like, I don't do that. Um, sometimes I'll drink a sparkling water, but if I do, I want a little more flavor into it. And so I'll put like part of an element in it uh, or something else like that. I know that some people are more nervous of the natural ingredients flavor. I think there's a couple people online who talk about those being um, not good for you. And so, you know, I, I don't think there's, I think a lot of carnivores incorporate uh, sparkling waters and then they're able to have that with no issues. Um, but it depends on how unhealthy you are, to be honest. I think though, at the end of the day, if you having a sparkling soda water helps you to enjoy this way of eating and it's not negatively impacting your health, then I don't really think it's worth cutting out completely all the time. So I'm going to make sure I didn't miss any super chats. Um, and then we will as soon as I'm done with those, we will get signed off. But yeah, a couple of you um, said, everybody say happy birthday, Chris. We're going to celebrate. I'll post all kinds of good stuff. Um, I am super, I'm, yeah, I'm thankful he's back. I know you, uh, oops, sorry. That was, I don't have time for that one. I'm so sorry. Um, let me say this. Oh, can you talk more about your struggles and issues during your weight loss and photos too? I have lots of that on my channel. And I'm sorry that I can't do that right now, but I do have lots of that on the channel. So make sure you check out like the video. I have like food addiction videos and then also like how I finally kept it off. Um, but yeah, we are super grateful for all of you. Thank you so much. Um, last thing I want to say, if you want more content, if I didn't get to your question, if you need support, if you want to come hang out, you can come to 
lauraeastbath.locals.com. Uh, I answer questions there all day, every day long. It's like the one place on the internet. I have like a normal job. I do videos that I pop up occasionally, but it's the one place on the internet where I like really spend my time answering questions, helping people, encouraging people. And we kind of all do that the same for each other. We try to get together in real life sometimes too. So um, you can come hang out there. And I hope overall this was helpful for you. So thanks guys for tuning in. Um, I'm doing another live stream in Locals next week. Uh, and I'll do several more of them there. And if not, in the meantime, happy carnivore.